What's up, Avenue? How you doing? Yeah, whatever. Who's the guy on stage? All right, hey, how many of you in this room even have ever met me? You recognize me from the post office pictures or whatever, anything? Some of you are like, wait, that's not where. Okay, there's like nine of you that know me. Great, congratulations. You get to party with me this morning. The rest of you, I'm just your eye candy for today, okay? We're so glad somebody just gave me a whoo, and that wasn't my wife because she's over there. So that's <laughs> weird, but that's great. I am Lee Coleman. I am uh, gonna hang out with you here today. Um, probably many of you have not heard of me and that's, you're probably better off. That's great. Uh, I uh, actually used to serve on staff here years ago. I was a part of the move when we moved over here to the new uh, property, the new campus and built this, uh, this cool thing. And so I've been a part of the Avenue uh, in that way, but also I've lived here in town for almost 15 years. And so I've been a part of the Avenue still because there's, there's everybody has a t-shirt. So it's, I'm, I'm constantly a part of the Avenue. I'm pretty sure the, the church is mailing those out now to people uh, that move into town. If not, it's a great idea. Uh, but still, it's, I'm constantly surrounded about so many of you. I mean, you are a huge influence in this community. And I've got to be part of that with you before. And I currently serve at Walks at Your Bible Church. And how cool is it that my pastor said, sure, go preach the avenue. How cool is that? And, and the fact that David even asked me, I mean, David, <laughs> David must have run out of dudes, all right, to ask to, to come and talk. But I am so grateful for this opportunity. I really am. I love the Avenue Church. It has meant so much to our family. Uh, and there's so many of you in here that, that we have connected in, in one way, form, or fashion. It's been really cool uh, to be back here with you. If you're watching online with us right now, I just want to say I'm so glad that you're watching. Would you, would you mind if you're online watching today because you're on vacation? Because apparently half of Waxahachie is uh, on vacation. But if that's you and you're watching online, please go ahead, man. Let us know that you're there. Uh, we'd love to just connect with you and, and just uh, say hey, uh, right back to you after you say hey. So uh, worship with us. But hey, if you're watching online, don't forget, that's not all. Come and be a part of this in person. Don't let the internet be your thing, okay? So come and be a part of this when you can. For the rest of us that are in the room today, let's party, all right? If you've got a Bible, I wanna ask you to go to the book of Ephesians and uh, just kind of hold that spot there. And you're like, Bible? It's always on the screen. Okay, yeah, that's gonna be up there later too. But if you didn't bring a physical copy with you today, just, just get your phone out or your tablet or whatever you brought with you. I'd love for you to see it so you know it's not just stuff that I'm making up, okay? It'd be great for us to be there together. But we're gonna be in the book of Ephesians chapter two specifically in just a few moments. But I'm so grateful for the Avenue's influence. They've, they've been a big part of my life and, and, and also my family's life. You and I, most of you in here don't know me, so let me tell you a little bit about us. Like I said, we've been here around 15 years, pretty close. Uh, I'm not really good with numbers, but it's in that range. Um, and, and then I do have four kids. I'm good with those numbers, okay? I know how many of them there are. I don't know when their birthdays are, but we got four, okay? We have our oldest, Caleb, who's about to graduate from Texas Tech in about two weeks. I mean, that's huge for us. That was a rough nine years, man. Uh, I mean, it's, <laughs> it's uh, but it's good. No, he did it in, I don't know, like around four, but... Uh, uh, we're so proud of him. And, and then we have uh, here with us today, uh, my daughter Faith and her husband Alec. And is Hannah still with y'all back there? Or did y'all take her? In? Okay, and, and our granddaughter Hannah. I'm a grandfather, right? Look at this. This is grandfather material, man. It's the best looking grandpa around, right? Some of y'all want to argue about it, but we're not gonna. I've got the microphone. So we, we have them. They're today, uh, Faith and Alec have been married uh, for a year, and they, then, this, then this Hannah has shown up, our granddaughter, uh, this last year. Uh, it's so exciting. It's so fun to be a grandparent and be able to play with her and smile at her and give her back uh, when we're done. And so that's been really good. And, and uh, then we've got my daughter, Mary Grace, uh, who just graduated from Waxahachie High School and is about to start college here in just a, just a few weeks. Uh, and then we have one more daughter at home, and her name is Lily, and she's eighth grader. She's in here with us, hanging out. Uh, and so she's trying, yeah, oh, you, you throwing your hands up in there now, huh, Lily? All right, everybody's looking now. You won. All right, so that, my family, I'm so grateful for them. And then my wife, Melanie, uh, who, who gave me all these kids, um, she's a math teacher and also a cheer coach here at uh, WHS. And so she teaches at Coleman Junior High. And, and some of you in here have either had her as a math teacher uh, or, or your kid did. And we're not going to talk about our relationship anymore in regards to that, just in case your kid struggles in math. And it uh, was kind of leaving a bitter taste in your mouth. But she's an incredible math teacher. She's the one that they look to to take people from, I can't do it, to somebody please tell me, to I got this thing figured out. She's amazing. Um, and I'm so grateful that we get to be really invested in our community. Like I said, I have these three daughters, 
Um, out of my four children, three of them were Waxahachie uh, cheerleaders. Of course, my son wasn't, that's great. Uh, but my, my three daughters have been, and, and it's been such an investment for us, but it's put us right in the heart of so much of our community. And you know what? Everywhere we turn and everywhere we go, since we haven't been serving on staff here at the Avenue, we see the Avenue. This church is everywhere. You guys are, are infiltrating every gap that we can find in this community. And you know what? That's a good thing. That's a great thing. But I'm gonna go ahead and tell you right now, it's not enough. It's not enough. Not quite yet. Because the reality is, let's just say there's 3,000 or so people that happen to show up at the Avenue on a Sunday. That's a drop in the bucket, y'all, compared to the number of people that live in our area. How many more need to hear? How many need to know about Jesus? A lot. So what are we doing with that? Are we waiting on the next church event for us to invite them to? Okay, that's a possibility, but I wanna challenge you today like the Ephesians were challenged to say, but what part are you playing as an individual? You're a part of the church and that's great. Be a part of those events, bring people. That's why this church does it. This church's vision is like, you hate church? Okay, cool, come here, try this out. You're far from God and you really don't care about the things of God, which maybe some of you in this room are that very person today and you're still checking this stuff out. You just, you just don't like church. Well, the Avenue Church wants to be a church for people who don't like church. There's not a lot of people here that uh, have always had the best of experiences with the religious realm. And that's one of the things that's unique and super cool about the Avenue is that we want to see people at this church, and I want to see people at my church, Walks at your Bible, who are far from God come and be drawn to God. Not just through the events that happen, but through the relationships. And that's part of what we're going to talk about today. The Avenue Man, know, grow, serve, be about that, and help others to be about it as well. When I was growing up in Big Spring, Texas, which if you don't know where that's at, you've, you've maybe driven through it on your way to somewhere else. It's out in West Texas by Midland and Odessa. It's in that area of Texas when God made the earth. He's like, this is what I have left over. He just dropped it out there, you know? It's that part. That's where I grew up out there in West Texas. And in Big Spring, I, I grew up in a family where, where my mom was a believer, but my dad did not believe in Jesus. And I would have loved to have had a church like the Avenue who was working hard to be everywhere they could to be able to reach as many people as they could reach for the cause and the name of Jesus Christ. But in my community that at that time didn't exist. There wasn't somebody who was doing that. Basically churches opened their doors on Sunday and just hoped that people showed up. And, and for me, there wasn't a family ministry. There wasn't a church that had a family ministry like you have that was trying to make it personal like you heard about this morning, that was trying to say, hey, let's go next level and let's, let's bring people in, not just a kid or not just the parents, but the whole unit, family ministry. Let's be a part of that. I didn't have that kind of stuff around me in my life, but I did have a mom who was a believer and I had a dad who was not. And so I grew up with this tension in my home of, of that very thing, basically completely opposite points of view on many different things. And, and there was a lot of stuff that my dad taught me. My dad was great. Even though he didn't believe or trust in Jesus, he was a great guy, super smart. All my growing up years, man, were, were, were learning from him how to fix cars. I didn't really pay that much attention, uh, but uh, he tried. I know how to jumpstart it and start it, right? So that's about it. Uh, but he, he tried to teach me that. He tried to teach me how to hunt. Um, I'm pretty good at shooting stuff. Don't want to touch it after that. Uh, he, he, he tried to teach me how to do those manly kind of things. I still, if I go fishing, I can't touch the fish. Somebody's gonna have to help me. But I, I know how to, I, I'm not afraid of putting the worm on the, on the line. I can do that part. I can kill those worms, you know? I won't mess with anything else. But he tried to teach me the things that dads try to teach their sons. I, and, and it was a great growing up time, man, camping with him, hanging out with him, working with him. He was a good dad in so many ways. My mom was a great mom, but she had this tension where she kind of had to dance around my dad's kind of beliefs or unbeliefs, you know, the things that he thought were important versus the things that she knew were important in regards to relationship with God. And so that was a hard place to kind of grow because I didn't know who to follow, you know what I mean? There was that tension in the house where I wasn't sure uh, who was right, who was not, um, what's, what, you know, what's the deal with this and, and who, who do I kind of pattern myself after? And then I had this really big moment happen in my life when I was 12. When I was 12, um, all of a sudden, just out of the blue, my dad passed away. And, and so my dad, he died of a massive heart attack one night. And it's just like, what? Where did that come from? What? Just 
I don't even understand. What do I do with that? And for some of you men in the room, you know what it was like and you remember what it was like to be 12. Crazy days, man. And then you lose one of the biggest influences in your life. What do you do with that? Dude, I didn't have a church that was reaching out to me and saying, here's what you do with that. I didn't have a a church that had a family ministry that said, hey, can we walk through this with you? I didn't have that, but the avenue is that in this community. Or at least the avenue has that opportunity to be that in this community. But are we doing it? I think sometimes yes, and sometimes we pass. It would have been great if somebody could have helped me like continue the process that my dad started me on. I was an insecure little guy. I didn't have a lot of things that I thought positively about in regards to myself. I mean, just picture it for just a second. Let's just say I weighed about the same that I weigh right now, which we're not gonna name that number, but let's just say I weighed about what I weigh right now, but let's just say I'm two feet shorter, okay? That was me as a kid. You're like, no way, no way. I know, because you look at this and you think, there's no way you were a fat kid, you know? No way, you're so built now. I know, it's confusing. But I was, man. I had some problems with gravity and, and I had some problems with uh, bread and milk and, uh, and I like to consume a lot of them. And, and I remember my dad trying to figure out ways to, to help me understand who I was, but he wasn't coming from a Christ perspective. So it was kind of mixed and, and I didn't understand. My dad took me to this place called Anthony's, which was a, a store in town. And it was the only place that you could buy jeans for fat kids, okay? And that's a real thing, man. If you've been there, then you know, all right? Just nudge somebody next to you and say, yeah, it's real. Uh, he took me to Anthony's where we had to buy husky jeans. Anybody know about husky jeans? <laughs> Nobody wants to raise their hand. But husky jeans that are only sold in light blue, okay? So you walk into your elementary school, school everybody knows you got an elastic waistband, all right? <laughs> everybody knows. But you know what? It was comfortable. So... Whatever, but I grew up in that time where I needed somebody to, man, show me what it looked like to be a man no matter where I was. And and my dad tried, but then my dad was gone. And the church had an opportunity to be an influence, just like we in this room have an opportunity to influence others. And you as a church have an opportunity to influence people when you see just life happening. But are we taking those opportunities? That big moment happened in my life And that was a major loss. I mean, you can imagine, it was a major loss. But God had something else that he wanted to do with that. But God had somewhere else he wanted to go with that. My family, my dad was not a believer, my mom was, because there's really two kinds of people, those that trust in Jesus and those that don't. We just came out of this heaven series, right? How many of y'all were here for all of the heaven series, all three weeks? Man, y'all get like a gold star or something. How many of you were here for at least one? And by the way, church is online. You can watch it there too, just so you know. But if you were here for the heaven series, you're probably challenged like I was, like, oh my gosh, why am I not keeping heaven in mind and and remembering that those around me, there's only one way to heaven and that's through Jesus who died for our sin, took it upon himself on the cross because we deserve that punishment for our mess ups. He died, went to the grave, but he came back to show, hey, I got you. Trust in me, I can forget. I am the way, the truth, and life. No one comes to the Father and gets to heaven except through me. And so the cool thing about that is it's true, it's real, and it's challenging. And that heaven series reminded me of that and I sometimes forget to talk to people around me about where they are in regards to heaven or not. And when I was watching that series, I started thinking about my dad and started thinking, I'm not gonna see him again. Because from all signs that I know and everything that I know, he, he did not believe and trust in Jesus. And when he died, according to the Bible, he's not going to heaven. And that's kind of sad for me. And I didn't know what to do with that. Not even just a couple of weeks ago, I was like, my goodness. This is a real thing and it's a real important thing. And because of that, I have opportunity to influence people who are maybe walking through the questioning themselves of is this real or is it not? And maybe you're in this room this morning and you're thinking about that very thing. But that was a moment in my life when my dad did pass away that I was like, man, now what? But God had something different on the way. 
It's, it's in this room, we have people on a scale from one to 10, right? Some of you are a 10, right? You're tight with Jesus. You've already spent three hours with him this morning, right? You got up at the crack of dawn and you've been praying hard on your knees. That may be a couple of you in here, but then there's the rest of you and the rest of us that are somewhere in the middle, all the way down to those that are like, yeah, I don't even like church or songs or even people to mention the name Jesus, but I'm here. And so let's just see what happens. Anywhere in there, there's a mix of all those people in this space today. And some of you are morning people and some of you are night people. How many of you are morning people in this room? Yeah, it's the later service in the day, so I didn't think so. <laughs> you four morning people, bless your hearts, okay? Good for you. Y'all are so messed up. How many of you are later in the day kind of people? Where are you at? Yeah, this is our party time. It's up time. I figured for you morning people, listen, if God wanted us to see the sunrise, he'd have put it in the middle of the day. You don't have to get up and watch that stuff. I figured God made me a late day person so I could see the beauty all around me. You know, I don't need to wake up and watch it start. All right. He's got it covered. He doesn't need my help. But there are those people in this room, just like there are people all over the, the spectrum of what they believe and how much they're trusting in God today. Sometimes we look at, at that and we, we, we forget that there's not only morning people and late day people, but there's believers and there's not believers. And, and are we keeping that in mind in every conversation that we enter into throughout a week? Because I want to remind you that being a Christian and following after Jesus is not just a Sunday thing, it's a seven day thing. It's an everyday process and it's not just something you show up and experience on Sunday, it's what happens next and next and next every day. When my dad passed away, that was a big but God moment in my life. What I mean by that is it was a wake-up call in some respects where I needed to begin to connect or reconnect or for the first time really recognize that there was something else that I had not understood yet and not walked into yet. And maybe you're in that space today. Maybe today is one of those moments where maybe that connection will happen for you. So let's look at what God's word says and let's see what Ephesians chapter two says and let's, and let's go there. Because the, the Ephesian church had been told by Paul in, in chapter one of Ephesians, you guys are doing so good. Just like I told you, church, you're doing so good in this community. You're doing so many good things. Keep it up. He's like cheerleading in chapter one of Ephesians. Keep going, keep going. You're doing it. Way to go, guys. But here's why you should keep going. Here's why you should keep plugging away. Here's why you should keep sharing with other people about the goodness and the greatness of God. In chapter two, we see Paul say in verse one, once you were dead because of your disobedience and your many sins, you used to live in sin just like the rest of the world, obeying the devil, the commander of the powers in the unseen world. He is the spirit at work in the hearts of those who refuse to obey God. All of us, used to live that way, following the passionate desires and inclinations of our sinful nature. By our very nature, we were subject to God's anger, just like everybody else. Just like everybody else. Remember that scale of one to 10, one being far from God, 10 being really close with God? Guys, we're all in the same boat here. We all have messiness that's a part of our lives. And we all have these moments that are less than perfect that are part of our story and a part of our journey. That happens in every life, man. And Paul is reminding the Ephesian church, you were once there, guys. You were there. But in chapter one, he's like, y'all are doing so good about telling people about Jesus. You're doing so excellent. You're teaching right. You're, you're, you're getting into it together. You're caring for people well. But don't forget from where you came. Don't forget you were once lost and then because of the grace and the goodness of God. That's where it comes in here. Back in verse three, it says, all of us used to live that way, following the passionate desires and inclinations of our own sinful nature. By your very nature, we were subject to God's anger just like everyone else, verse four. But God is so rich in mercy and he loved us so much that even though we were dead because of our sin, he gave us life when he raised Christ from the dead. For he raised us from the dead along with Christ and seated us with him in the heavenly realms because we are united with Christ Jesus. So God can point to us in all future ages as examples of the incredible wealth of his grace and kindness toward us as shown in all that he has done for us who are united with Christ Jesus. God saved you by his grace when you believed. 
And you can't take credit for this. It's a gift from God. Salvation is not a reward for the good things that we have done, so none of us can boast about it. For we are God's masterpiece that he has created us anew in Christ Jesus so we can do good things that he planned for us long ago. We have these but God moments in our lives that have happened to most of us. I mean, as a matter of fact, most of you that are sitting in the seats today inside this building that we understand the Avenue Church meets at, you are here because you had a but God moment. Because life was crap, but God showed you another way. Life was hard. Something happened, and it was nasty, and it was messy, but God showed you how he could turn that. My dad died, but God had another plan. I just didn't know it yet. I argue with my wife sometimes. She wins every time. But God even has a plan to develop me through those moments. This is hard. Being married is hard. But God. I lost a friend to death. But God. Some of you in this room have lost a child, lost a parent, lost a job, lost a position on a team didn't make the team, didn't get the job, but God. Life gets hard and life gets messy. But God is so rich in mercy and he loved us so much. Maybe it's time we start sharing with other people around us our but God moments. Maybe it's time that we begin as not just the Avenue Church, but as a church in this community in Ellis County, maybe we need to start all of us together going places and talking about our but God moments when somebody is like, man, hey, this, this, I don't understand how you are making it through that. Well, let me tell you about it. It's been hard, but God. Let me tell you what he's doing with it now. There's a few phrases that'll be on the screen that if you're a note taker, you might want to put down that, that kind of we're taking out of this passage of, of Ephesians chapter two. And the first of them is the one I've said a whole bunch today already. It's, but God, I want you to start thinking about your story. What is it in your, and some of you are like, dude, which one? You know, I've got so many places where there have been, but God moments where I was tanking. Things were not good. Our marriage was trash. My kids were punks, but God. Y'all really connected with that parent one, right? Yeah. But God. And so why don't we talk about that more often? I think we're real good at inviting people to come to an event, and there's nothing wrong with that. I mean, that's one of the reasons the Avenue does cool stuff is so that people can come to that and like, feel like, oh, this is kind of a normal thing to be, uh, a normal place to be, a normal thing to do. And, 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 but what about your story? Are we telling it? Are you telling it? Are you talking about it? I promise you that makes a bigger difference than anything else. Because when my dad passed away and things sucked, but God brought people into my life that never before had entered. But God planned some things beyond that that I had no idea were coming. But God prepared a way for me to recognize him and to call me to himself. There's no reason that a dude like me raised in an environment like I was raised should be standing on any stage telling anybody to trust in God except, but God had another path. He had another plan. And for most of you, you've experienced the same. But let's start talking about it so that what we see in verse seven, so God can point to us in all future ages as examples of the incredible wealth of his grace and kindness toward us as shown in all that he has done for us who are united with Christ Jesus. Talk about your but God story so that you can be used by him. Some of you men in this room, you're like, listen, man, I grew up here and people know my backstory. I was jacked up. I am messed up still, but God's doing a work. I don't think I want to tell people my story. It makes me nervous, you know? It's embarrassing. I don't want to tell anybody my story of my mess ups because I don't want them to know guess what? When you get to tell people about where you've messed up and where God has brought you, they're gonna be more impressed with what God has done than with what you did. 
And so what we get to do is, this is where I was, this is what Jesus did, and here is where we're going. Is it embarrassing? Have you told your kids where God has brought you from? Lee, I don't know if I can do that. Yeah, you can. Just be a grown-up. Have you told your wife, man, how, how God is changing you? Lee, that's all emotional, man. Don't be talking to me about that right now. I can't, I can't, yeah, you can. I think we can. And I think the more that we begin to talk about our but God moments, the more people's lives will be transformed to trust in Jesus. And the more we share our story, the more we trust in him as well because we continue to recognize it every time that we tell the story again and again. Maybe you need to start talking about your story so that people can see that your belief supersedes your previous behavior. Maybe you need to to talk to some of those buddies you went to high school with here in Ellis County somewhere who knew you as a different guy or a different girl and Jesus has introduced himself to you and you were changed and you met him and things are different and now you walk into your high school reunion, you know, after you lost those 30 pounds to show up to that so you can impress everybody. Let me tell you a little something about being in shape in high school. Everybody gets fat eventually, all right? I just started early, all right? Ain't no big deal. But you show up to that reunion, people are like, oh man, you wanna, you, we used to party together. Hey, we did. You're right, that was crazy. Let me tell you what God's done since. You're like, Lee, you can't talk about that at a re-. Yeah, you can. You don't see those people. Those of you that are in high school in the room right now, you don't see them much after that. I'm just gonna be straight up with you. What, my best friends, my best, don't worry about it. What if we went to places that knew us as something else and we begin to share, hey, this is where I was. This is where God met me. Here's where he has me now. Lives will change. Lives will change. But God, belief over behavior. And then, and then verse 10 reminds us as we look at it together, for we are God's masterpiece. He has created us anew in Christ Jesus so we can do the good things he planned for us long ago. But God, those stories help us connect our belief and and show where we have come from our behavior. And then we get to be helpful and be hopeful to a community that needs that. This church is real good at helping and giving hope, but we as individuals need to increase our capacity for that as well. How are you being helpful? How are you being hopeful? When somebody tells you a story at work, you're like, yeah, man, that sucks. (laughs) Sorry, man. How can we offer help and hope instead of just saying, that's a bummer? How can we do that? Oh, maybe by sharing our but God moment. Maybe by saying, hey man, this is where I was and here's where God has me. My belief has taken me beyond my behavior. And now, let me tell you, Jesus can help and there is hope. Be helpful, be hopeful. Some of you are still staring at me like, oh man, Lee, you look real good, but I don't know that I believe what you're talking about. I don't know that I, that I am all in. Well, I'll tell you what, man. There was a guy that was completely out, a guy that was completely done, but Jesus met him and turned it around. You find that story recorded in Luke chapter seven, verses 11 through 17. It says this, soon afterward, Jesus went with his disciples to a village of, called Nain and a large crowd followed him. No duh, right? He's like healing people and fixing things, right? So it's like, of course people are gonna follow him. Verse 12, A funeral procession was coming out as he approached the village gate. The young man who had died was a widow's only son. And a large crowd from the village was with her. When the Lord saw her, his heart overflowed with compassion. Don't cry, he said. Then he walked over to the coffin and touched it. So the bearers stopped. Young man, Jesus said, I tell you, get up. Then the dead boy sat up and began to talk. And Jesus gave him back to his mother. Great fear swept the crowd and they praised God saying, a mighty prophet has risen among us and God has visited his people today. And the news about Jesus spread throughout Judea and the surrounding countryside. Y'all, when Jesus shows up to the funeral, the funeral's over, all right? When he walks into a moment where he sees deadness and brings life, things change and people notice. In your life and my life, many of us in this space have had that exact experience. Just like Paul reminded the Ephesians, you were once dead, but in Jesus, you've been made alive. 
And when there's a difference like that, you think that young man got out of that coffin and was like, oh, that was neat. Hmm. Cool. Mom was probably happy. Hey, mom, how's it going? I'm going to town, hang out. He was probably stoked out of his mind. He woke up, I'm in a coffin? What's going on? He climbs down. Y'all, I'm, a, y'all I'm, I'm alive. Where's our experience like that in sharing our but God moments? I was here. I was dead. I was messed up and life is messy. And that's the way it is. But many of us in this room have been made alive in Christ. So how about let's be like the dead boy raised from the dead, probably jumping around. I'm not gonna do that today. I'll probably twist an ankle or something, but let's just think about it in a mental state. If I was jumping around all over here, I know that's a horrible image for you. It would be the way that I would respond to being raised from the dead. And you know what? If you've got a but God story, let's start being excited about that. Let's start pursuing others in our relationships and being, finding ways to get in there and say, but God, today's a hard day for me, but God, this has been a hard year, hard five years, hard situation. Y'all, life happens and stuff gets messy, but God, he's right there in the mix. Some of you have never trusted in Jesus and you're here today and you're like, man, I don't I know there's those two types of people. I'm not talking about the morning people and the late day people. I'm talking about there's the people that trust in Jesus for the forgiveness of their sin and follow after him hard. And then there's those that don't. If you've trusted in him and been born again and given another shot, a second chance, let's live like it. Let's talk about it. Let's be about it. Let's be an influence in this community so young men like me, like I was, have somebody like you who's speaking into their lives and giving them an opportunity to meet Jesus. That's what our family ministry here is about at this church. That's what, that's what our family ministry is about at Walks Hatchie Bible where I serve. Let's do this thing together. For some of us in the space, you're like, man, Lee, I don't feel comfortable with it. It makes me feel weird. It makes me feel sick to my stomach to have to share my story. Well, that's okay because Psalm 23 gives us a little bit of encouragement. Some of you know what I'm talking about with Psalm 23, right? That's the one you read at funerals. When you start reading that stuff while we're alive, okay? While there's there's a need, while there's a a need for comfort, yes, funerals is where that is. We need some comfort in those moments, yes. But some of you right now need the comfort because you're scared to talk about your but God moment. And you know what? Guess what? Here we go, Psalm 23. The Lord is my shepherd. I have all that I need. He lets me rest in green meadows and he leads me beside peaceful streams. He renews my strength. He guides me along the right paths, bringing honor to his own name. Even when I walk through the darkest valley, I'm not gonna be afraid for you are close beside me. Your rod and your staff, they protect me and comfort me. You prepare a feast for me in the presence of my enemies. You honor me by anointing my head with oil and my cup overflows with blessing. Surely your goodness An unfailing love will pursue me all the days of my life and I will live in the house of the Lord forever. It's hard to share your story, but God is ready for you to do that. God sent his son Jesus to die on our behalf because our mess ups deserve punishment. It deserved deserved death, but God said, "I, I don't want you to have to do that. So I'm gonna send my son Jesus so that he can take that punishment for you. And many of you in this space have trusted in him. And if you have, then you saw your life change. That was a but God moment. You were headed in one direction, but God stepped in. There's a quote that'll be on the screen by a guy named Ken Coleman. And he says this, only when you see yourself as you really are, can you begin to shape the person that you would like to become. Most of us in here can admit we've been a mess, but God has stepped into that mess. And change this. Why are we talking about it? Are we being about it? Are we sharing that truth? He continues on to say, only when you recognize the valley in which you stand can you map the mountain that you would like to climb. Many of us might like to share our story. We're just not sure how. I mean, you've recognized the messiness that you've been in. You know where you've been. You, you know it was all jacked up and you also know that Jesus has begun to do a work in you. Verbalize that. Talk about that. Share that. Do something with that. You're looking at a guy standing up here just sharing with you today and trying to encourage you and challenge you at the same time who is really messed up. 
I've had some big moments in my life that were not super happy. So have you. You know what I'm talking about. There's some hard things that happen. But what does God want to do with that? How does he want to change you and how does he want to change those around you? Look to him in those moments. and See what he has to say. I'm a messed up guy, but God, <laughs> he's fixing that. He's changing that. And I need to tell more people about that. And so you. Ephesians chapter two, verses eight, nine, and 10 to finish says this. God saved you by his grace when you believed. You can't take credit for this. It's a gift from God. Salvation is not a reward for the good things that we have done, so none of us can boast about it. For we are God's masterpiece and he has created us anew in Christ Jesus so we can do the good things that he planned for us long ago. Avenue friends, let's get about doing the good things that he planned for us to do long ago. Let's talk about our but God moments and continue to look to him as he makes us more and more like him every day. Can I pray for you? Father God, thank you for this church and the influence that they are in this community. God, I pray that you convince them and challenge them as well as challenge me to continue to be that influence, but to share our but God stories. God, you are great and you're mighty and you're powerful and you're amazing and you are a life changer. God, may we speak about that more often. May we be more about that in our everyday lives. Father, may the dads in this room share how you have touched their lives with their children. Father, may the moms in this room share the same thing with their kids or whoever they come in contact with. Father, for the, for the bosses in this room, would you cause them to be those godly leaders in their place of business where they share their but God moments <laughs> and blow everybody's mind as to why God is blessing them so much. Father, may you challenge us to be those people that talk about you and your magnificent work in our life. Thank you for who you are, for what you're doing, and for what you're going to do. It's in Jesus' name that we pray. Amen. Y'all give it up for Lee. Lee, thank you so much for leading us this weekend. Hey, listen, on your way out, get one of these cards. We want you to be a part of what God is doing in our family ministry. Fill it out. Swing by the table uh, this weekend, this Wednesday, excuse me. We're doing our big family ministry event. If you are interested in getting plugged in or you are already plugged in to our family ministry, this is for you. Like I said, child care and food are covered. So it's a great event. Come be a part of it. Hey, always glad to have you with us on the weekend. Y'all have a great week. We'll see you next week, okay?